Welcome back to round three, heat number nine at the Mosh Rip Grill Pro Portugal. Another exciting matchup on paper where they've been hard to predict the results as we'll fly into live action with Jeremy Flores getting underway. Grab rail reverse attempt on the inside and he ends up going down. Flores surfing against former world champ CJ Hobgood in his retirement year. Both getting a little bit active during the break. So that was Jeremy's second wave so far. At a 1.93 on that with that incomplete finishing move. The pots, that's the move we love to see out of these guys. Going for broke, big radical attempts in their surfing. Both these guys solid in big barrels. Where, where do you put CJ in that radical factor? When he was a Grom, he'd had some pretty interesting aerials that he was going for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's, uh, he, he had that innovation, didn't he? He's got those beautiful straight airs that I love seeing. <clears throat> you know, he's, uh, he's got a pretty much an all-round kind of game. Silky smooth on his backhand. He's, uh, he's good in the barrel. Um, the tide's going out, so who knows? We might see a couple of little barrels, see a couple of sneaky little tunnels from CJ. Jeremy obviously is going to uh, stick to the manoeuvres here at the moment. Both these guys will will see more rail surfing than anything else. Here we go. So checking out this last wave. Well, this was what CJ opened up with to yep. start off this heat. On his backhand, a 5.33 for CJ. Talk about that silky smooth approach that he brings to the game. The lovely rail work, seamless surfing from CJ. On the other hand, Jeremy, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more radical. And this is why, watch this turn right here. Upside down, inverted, inside out, club sandwich, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot going on there, <laughs> that's for sure. And uh, this was Jeremy's 4.0, his opening wave on his backhand. Jeremy Flores, one of the best backhand surfers, I reckon, on the planet. Just uh, come off a win in Tahiti. And uh, this one right here as well, just waiting for the scores on CJ's front side. Open up with a four on his backhand, now opting for a left-hander. Nice, clean rail surfing from CJ Hobgood. This is the last time we're going to see him surfing in Portugal, so he wants to make it a good one. He wants to go out with a bang. And he's been doing just that. We remember these guys meeting up in a great matchup over in Tahiti where we knew CJ was going to be leaving the competition jersey. Hobgood ran into Flores in the semifinals, and he lost that matchup. You go back in history with these two, and they've had a lot of meetings. Jeremy, so far, was CJ's number. Live action now. Jeremy coming off a frontside carve. Snaps it right on the lip. Another big hack in the pocket. Full carve once again. Looking to finish strong. Rock and roll flow to get out of there. The Frenchman on fire. Showing a lot of variety. A lot of flair. Started with a 4.0. And that score is going to go into his top two. There's a little right now setting up for Hobgood. Stretching out in front of him pretty quickly. So he's got to pick up the pace. Goes for a flyaway punt, and he's down. Yeah, CJ flying through the air there on the backhand. No grab, so kind of lost connection with his board. So CJ with a couple of quick scores under his belt. Jeremy needing a 5.93 on that last exchange. I think he's going to get it, though, Joe. Some clean surfing from Jeremy Flores. I like it when he pulls back a little bit, you know. Just, uh, you know, in, in, in even him pulling back, it's still pretty much full tilt. So let's have a look. Beautiful little wave here. Conditions improving. Nice opening gouge right there. And then the wave starts to stand up. Jeremy tags at once. And yet again, bang through the lip right there. Just clean, smooth, crisp surfing that is going to gather some good scores on that one right there. So Jeremy, needing a 5.93, will probably take the lead with that exchange. The other day, Jeremy was just talking about surfing conditions that are challenging. He said he'll warm up in challenging conditions and feel solid. But when the heat starts... Things kind of get really difficult for him. He's always a guy that really loves things when everything's looking perfect. He loves obviously getting barreled. He's a pipe master, won Chopu this year. Right now he's coming out of the gates firing. The conditions are groomed and rippable. Last of floor is a 7.83. Wow. CJ now needs a 6.51 to take the lead. You know, that's going to give Jeremy a lot of confidence, you know, and it's going to make him realize, look, I don't need to go and do those upside down nose pick air you know reverse maneuvers just keep the ball on the face of the wave just mistake free surfing's going to win the win the heat jeremy under priority takes another right quick rip off the top nice transition softer snap as this wave's now bowling up punches out the closeout section and steps off 
Flores heating up, spends a lot of time training, working hard, now dedicated to staying in the top 10 for the remainder of his career. Trying to get rid of a 4.0, but looks like we have some waves on the way here, Potts. <laughs> well, where did this swell come from, Joe? This is amazing. <laughs> um, so glad that uh, the commissioners kept the thing running and it's just getting better and better. CJ having a look at this one, probably wave of the day right now. Now setting up his backhand, former world champ, backhand float. Hobgood floats the next section. So that set wave just stretching out real quickly down the line, just offered two backside floats. We saw CJ's twin brother, Damian Hobgood, up there next to Josh Kerr, looking at this heave go down. Right there, Brett Simpson. Brett always talks about how much the Hobgoods gave to him when he qualified for the tour. They weren't competitors that held anything, that saved secrets. They'd give <laughs> and talk and yeah. tell them about their lineup spots, what boards to take. CJ's quick to note how it was uh, almost a love-war relationship with his twin brother. They had the same dreams, and sometimes it kind of felt like the room wasn't big enough for both of them. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I remember one quote, um, if someone's going to knock you off the tour, it's going to be me. <laughs> oh, remember <right>. that? <laughs> that was CJ back at Santa Cruz and yep. the cold water came up and, and Damien was in a position where he was trying to requalify. Requalify and they had this crazy heat and uh, they had this argument saying, and CJ turned around to his brother and said, if anyone's going to knock you off the tour, it's going to be me. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, there's no love loss. I mean, they love each other. Come on, they're twin brothers. But it's just that rivalry, that, uh, you know, that healthy rivalry that they both had. And I think uh, it, it really did push them to go as far as they both did. Oh, heroes to so many brother combos. You kind of see the opposite on the Godowskis clan where they've helped each other get on tour. But that inspiration of drive and competitiveness from the Hobgoods helped them accomplish their goals. Mm. It seemed like everything CJ did, Damien would accomplish the following year. CJ qualified. Damien got on tour the next year. CJ was Rookie of the Year. Damien took that effort as well. And then relatively early, CJ was able to clinch that world title back in 2001. This is the goofy foot. CJ setting up that first snap into the second one off the top. Holding the bottom turn, backhand float, creating some space. Set up work to find a finishing move. Cracks it shut way down the line. CJ hoping for a 7-5-4 as Jeremy finishes. Little inside corner left and he's out. Well, CJ needed a 7.54. Uh, at the moment, just with a 5 through 3 and a 4 8. So he's going to improve his situation after that exchange. So is Jeremy, though. I mean, uh, Jeremy got a pretty good wave. 5.03 is his second highest score. So he's going to replace that, which means CJ is going to require a little bit more. So we'll, uh, we'll see after this uh, scores drop in. We'll try and get a quick look at Jeremy's wave. Here we go. Good solid left hander. Jeremy off the bottom. Beautiful flow to hang time right there. And another big snap off the top. So Jeremy. Starting to get some confidence. That 7.83 has put him in a good position, Joe. And uh, on the other hand, here goes CJ trying to get himself back into this heat. Nice clean turn. Draws off the bottom again. So just nice, smooth surfing from CJ. Cranking it up on a couple of turns there. Gets his bonus section through the inside. So CJ Hubgood definitely is going to get himself back into this heat after that. Some nice composure. On the backhand of C.J. Hobgood to put himself back in this matchup. Talking about this kind of surprise we had in the swell coming in the afternoon. We had a conversation with Kirk Corte from Surfline, who's on hand for this event. He had a little note to the commissioners early this morning, saying that he noticed the offshore buoys that were slowly trending upwards this morning. So he was kind of saying, expect a few bigger sets in the mix, especially for the rest of the afternoon. Even as the tide starts to drop, and back out, the winds still look really favorable, light and variable throughout the remainder of the day. So he was kind of thinking it would be easy to finish round three. Kind of like those neat little surprises. You can check the buoys, and next thing you know, we're scoring here on Sunday. And that's the thing, you know. I mean, uh, you know, Surfline's obviously right on the money as far as the forecasts go. But for me, you've got to get up every morning, come down to the beach, and check it, you know, because this kind of things can happen. You know, you get these little surprise little localized storms, you know, that, that aren't really showing on the on the maps and, um, you know, have quite pleasantly surprised. I mean, there's a spot at home that, you know, you can sort of see that it's going to be good, but then sometimes you rock up and, you know, without anyone knowing about it, you, you sort of catch it. So you've got to just be ready to get up and check it. 
Now looking at 15.45 to go, we're going to watch Jeremy Flores set up a backside snap. He'll get down to the bottom, hammers that second turn, and gets out. He's got an amazing backhand carve. When we kind of think of power hooks and carving maneuvers, kind of the first ones that usually pop to mind are big forehand gouges. What are the techniques that you need to know about when you do a big backhand power gouge? Well, it's, it's all about the back foot, isn't it? I mean, uh, you, can, you, know, you almost get more body involved in the backside snap. You know, you, you sort of get the ball in a certain position and then you, you sort of talk the body all the way around. And you'll see exactly what I mean right here with Jeremy, straight up and down. And as he comes off the bottom right here, the body turns before the board does. So the upper part of the body sort of rotates and then the hips and everything else follow. And that's what gives it that, uh, that whip, that dynamic snap sort of uh, motion. And Jeremy did that exactly right. Well, now with 14.50 to go, one of the big names just got knocked out of the contest. John John Florence is with Chelsea Cannell. Hey, yeah, I am here with John John. John John, you started off really strong in that heat. It was a seesaw battle, went back and forth. What do you think went wrong? Um, yeah, I don't know. I got, I got the eight in the beginning, and then I just was having trouble finding another clean wave. You know, I might have tried to take off on, but I probably could have waited. There was still a lot of time left, and I should have waited for a clean open wave. And um, I kind of put the pressure on myself by taking off on a lot of closeouts and stuff. But... You know, overall, it was, a, it was a really fun heat. It's cool to serve against Keanu. I think, I think this is my first heat with him, possibly. Um, but since we've, you know, we've run up surfing contests together, and so it's really amazing. And uh, I just heard they qualified off that. So that's awesome. You know, I'm really stoked to be able to have him on tour another year. And, yeah, congratulations to him. You now you get some much-needed time at home, and obviously, you know, the Triple Crown will be coming up. How do you refocus, and how nice is it going to be to get to spend some time with your friends and family? Yeah, I can't wait to get home. It's been a long year traveling, a lot of ups and downs and stuff, but um, this is my favorite time of the year right, coming up right here and, you know, get to do the Triple Crown and surf at home. And, you know, there's been nonstop swell over there already, so I really can't wait to get back. <laughs> All right, we'll let you get to it. Thanks so much for your time. Cool, sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank you, Chelsea and John John Florence getting out of here quickly. A uh, tough battle there as he goes down in round three. He's had a lot of success at every venue around the world, and this year... Kevin, a little injuries, performing really well, but it's been a little bit tougher for him to get on the podium this season. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's tough to get on the podium, period. I mean, it's, you just see how hard it is. You know, you, you talk about the world title race, talk about the best surfers in the world. They've all just been upset by wildcards, so take all that into consideration. It's, um, it's not an easy thing to do anymore. Uh, gone are the days of having those easy heats. Uh, everything, everything is an uphill battle right now. So now looking at this matchup, round three, heat number nine. Jeremy Flores still leading 7-8-3 in a 6-3-3. And CJ chasing an 8.79. CJ still has priority. And at the moment, we'll just wait to see if the sets are going to start pouring through. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be returning to the Mosh Rip Curl Pro Portugal right after this. Had a banana. Pretty good. Right on, boys. You're out here in the water right now. CJ just paddled by. He's super pumped up. Said the conditions are getting way better. The winds are straight offshore. The tide's dropping out. Uh, some amazing waves this afternoon. Round four. 
Catch up to Strider in just a moment here as he's checking out his Samsung technology. We got a lot of turbulence out there. Love how that microphone could go underwater as well, but at times uh, you can just kind of lose that feed, but he was fired up. You can tell that much. The winds are perfect direction. The rights are just draining down the beach. We still have a great matchup going head to head. Jeremy Flores representing France on tour. He's been loving that. He's been doing it by himself for a long time. CJ Hobgood calling it quits after this season, but what an amazing year to celebrate. When uh, the WSL surprised him the other night at the hotel with kind of a special party, thanking him for what he had done in his career, I think everyone really took focus when Damian Hobgood took the mic. Uh, talked about the role that he's played as a brother, but also some of the harder times he saw his brother go through and saw him pick himself back up, and that's what he's most proud of. Get your board and get back out there. That's right. You know, and that's, uh, that's exactly what you got to do. And, you know, just uh, it's probably a blessing for CJ that Damo's there and, you know, pick your brother up and get, get your ass into gear, so to speak. And, uh, yeah, get back on tour. So CJ, what a year he's having too, though. Ten-point ride in, uh, in Tahiti. Uh, he's just surfing good. I think he's surfing as good as he ever has. Um, and he's going to leave the tour with a really good taste. Little right hander setting up Jeremy Flores. Plenty open face, but without priority. It'll be CJ's turn to take the rest of it. Solid bottom turn, great attack in the pocket. Projection flow, but he doesn't have anything left and he lets it all out. <laughs> He's here to compete. I was waiting for that to happen. <laughs> A big scream and bellow coming from the depths of CJ Hobgood's body. Everyone on the beach heard that one, and now Flores on the next wave. Not a whole lot on offer, so he gets out. He had to do that, though. He had to catch that wave. Jeremy was uh, in a good position, and he was going to tear that wave to pieces. So CJ didn't want Jeremy to get any further ahead. He's already looking for a set, an 8.79. So he didn't want Jeremy to back up that uh, 7.83 with another good score. At the moment, CJ right there. Just This is the wave that he took off Jeremy. Beautiful opening maneuver right there and then just didn't quite do enough. You can see him just letting go right there. Uh, I love it. I love that passion from CJ Hobgood. I'm going to miss it. I hope someone picks up where he left off. I know we've got Kai Otten still on tour. He's very much like that. <laughs> it's all about the goofy footers. What's up with these goofy footers? Kind of angry guys. They are fired <laughs> up. They, they always uh, bring everything they've got into big heats. And just looking at the form of rhythm of CJ Hobgood, like we mentioned this year, he's always talking about his heroes, the people he always looked up to. His favorite goofy foot of all time is Mark Ocalupo. And you look at that back arm. CJ was talking about every goofy foot with that back arm. One thing he says when he watches Aki surf, hand down, man down. As soon as he winds up, he's going to absolutely blitz the lip. CJ breaks down every goofy foot's back arm. He said Ace Bucken kind of throws him off because he doesn't have the same technical foundation as CJ or the other goofy foots but he still coils up and goes vertical. All those little nuances CJ's picked up on over the years, and like we said before, he'll share it with everybody on set. Yeah, exactly right. Um, and you know, the thing, thing about goofy footers, you find there's a, a lot of them have very similar techniques, whereas you look at the natural footers, and they're all so unique. I mean, you look from Kelly to John John to Jeremy, you know, you look at Mick and Joel, like they're all so different. It's almost like unconventional styles as opposed to traditional styles you look at everyone molds their their backhand surfing off Oki um, with it with the natural footers it's almost like anything goes so interesting but we always love just watching how their boards are connected and that flow that they drive off of Jeremy and CJ always are working on their equipment we have Pete Mel on hand listening in Pete you want to play would you rather <laughs> yeah would I rather would I'd, I'd rather ride any of these bars that these guys have <laughs> I mean this uh, you know all those guys listening out there no um, what I want to talk about though is, is you know, Jeremy's been kind of searching there for a little while, right? Where he was looking for different shapers, looking for different equipment to try and find that little magic sled under his feet. And it took him a little while, but then he got himself onto the JS models, you know, the Monsta, which is uh, a lot of the same models that you would say Joel Parkinson, Julian Wilson have been riding. Jason Stevenson out of the Gold Coast actually uh, grew up in North Strati, which is uh, now living in the Gold Coast shaping boards. But this is his backup board, which is a 5.9, 18 and a quarter, 2 and a quarter, just under 20 liters, I think it is. Uh, so I'm doing looking there. It's got to be over 20 liters. But anyway, 
Jeremy, you know, that connection for him now has really improved his surfing, right? I mean, you look at what he's done lately, winning an event, uh, just in what he's been doing in this heat right here. You can tell that he's super comfortable, and that just takes so many of those other elements that he can start working in the head, and, and Jeremy's been able to do that. This one, very simple, the monster model. It's got a little buckle on it, which uh, probably why it's in the backup, yeah. backup Raptor, Raptor. But I was going to ask you about that yeah. buckle, Peter. Yeah. I mean, that thing's going to snap, right? Yeah, and that's probably why it's sitting in the backups. But, I mean, ultimately, I think that he's got probably at least a few more. But, I mean, this is a good board, so that's why he's keeping it here. You know, his his templates are a little straighter than a lot of uh, the other monster models that I've seen. You can just see just off the tail. It's just got a little bit narrower, a little straighter outline to it, which gives a little more speed, a little bit more drive. Well, Pete, I had a would you rather question for you. All right, so all right. Okay, would you rather just ride one shaper for, uh, surfboards for your whole career or use a little bit of everything? Well, I think it, it it's at a point when you're trying to compete. I'm going to stop and let you call that action right there, Joe. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> we'll, oh. we'll get more questions out of him. Big carve. Now coming to the inside, projection snap off the top, now looking to finish deep off the bottom. A nice closeout wow. hammer for Jeremy Flores. On fire. His boards look amazing. We got to see the backup that was already buckled, so he's gone few, gone through a few. And right there trying to better a 6-3-3. I uh, think he's done it. I think that's uh, going to be his best score, Joe. And it was done underneath priority. He used his priority on the way before. Let's have a look. CJ just a little too deep. Jeremy off the bottom. This turn right there, one of the turns of the day. Jeremy again finds another good section, races down the line, and finishes off with a nice tail snap right there. So Jeremy Flores just about to drop his best score and uh, put the screws in on CJ Hobgood. That door is uh, slowly getting shut on CJ. That's right. We talked about the last matchup going Jeremy's way back at Chopu. The one win CJ did have over Jeremy was actually another semifinal back in Tahiti back in 2010 when he went on to finish in the final runner-up to Andy Irons. Uh, CJ said that's one of his most memorable heat surf, even though he didn't win the contest. That win for Andy was his comeback to form win. He hadn't won a contest in a while as we now see CJ drawing a vertical snap off the lip, jams it off the top. He's running out of space, wow. close out hack there. And you kind of look at the waves for Jeremy Flores. They're just running down the sandbank. Even on the set wave CJ's had, it's forced them to do maybe two floats as they're going pretty quickly down the line. Yeah, well, that tide's going out, Joe, so you're going to see the waves starting to straighten up and sort of lengthen us, so to speak. We're going to see, uh, you know, a lot less opportunity for these guys to really get those couple of quick turns in. Jeremy nailed that last one. I mean, what a score that's going to be. And there it is, Joe, just locked in for uh, Jeremy Flores, and it's put CJ in a combo situation. 9.43 from the panel for Jeremy Flores, lighting it up on his forehand. Huge cars with a ton of commitment with speed, power, and flow. Low score, 7.83. So now a huge task for Hobgood to come back. A couple of fives under his belt, but you know CJ will be going for broke if he gets the opportunity. Can't say enough about Flores with his complete 180 to winning heats. Spent the last two seasons on the championship tour, not getting into the nines, not making quarterfinal heats. Switched it just with his positive attitude, surfing for himself, and he's able to put himself in a top 10 picture, and he's absolutely dominating this matchup. Well, he wanted to, you know, he said in his uh, post-heat interview yesterday that when the waves are good, he surfs good. But when the waves aren't good, he, he finds it hard to really produce some big scores. Well, he's done exactly that. A 7.83 and a 9.43, 17.262 wave total. That's a great score from Jeremy Flores. CJ Hubgood trying to answer back, trying to get himself out of that combo situation. That last wave from CJ is 7.10. One minute 50 to go, still in that combo. So right now, Hobgood will be digging deep out the back. Talked about the glory years throughout his career when he was making a lot of money with big contracts. He saw that go up and down. He had his own surf shop where he'd be helping out kids locally. He even started Camp Hobgood with his twin brother. He'd get the up-and-coming grommets. And he'd teach them how to really rip and perform. Well, one thing that we love about CJ is his passion. Strider's in the water. Can you hear anything, Strider? 
I can hear everything. It's pretty amazing watching these guys paddle by. Jeremy's just head down focused. Right now you'll see him again taking off, grabbing the wall. The waves are just turning on, it seems like, as he pulled up underneath the bowl right there. You know, it's so great to see it from out here in the water. These guys are after it. CJ is just letting the world know how, like, his emotions. He's just been bellowing out war cries after his waves paddling out watching and hearing the scores of a 9.43. He's just screaming to the man upstairs. And it was just, you know, it's, it's impressive to see the passion behind that man's, you know, year, even though he's bowing out, he just still wants it that bad. Epic Strider, you have the best seat in the house in the lineup with these two going head to head. CJ letting everybody know how he feels, just letting everything hang out on the line. 537, he's been building, fired himself up to a 710, but Flores has been on fire, still having Hobgood needing two new waves. Flores with a 783 and a 943. That passion, fire, and energy from Hobgood is uh, really leaving a big mark on the top 34, and everyone's going to be trying to carry that CJ torch when he's not in the jersey next season. Yeah, absolutely right, Joe. And I think uh, CJ lucky uh, that Jeremy didn't better his situation with that last wave as well. Beautiful long barrel. And then CJ there. You can see just having a chat with Jeremy going, what do you do on that wave? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you do that to me? It's my last event. Come on. I know he's going to carry the torch for CJ, and it's another goofy for to call Kai Otten. That's right. A lot of fire out of Kai Otten, who got knocked out earlier in this contest in round two. Flores sharing the lineup once again with 2001 world champ CJ Hobgood. Flores earning that big win with a 17.26 combined total as he moves on to round four to take on Vasco Ribeiro and Keanu Asing later on in the contest. Coming up next is an all-rookie clash with Italo Ferreira and Ricardo Christie. We're bringing a couple of legends for the call and Ronnie Blakey and Ross Williams right after this. Just as long as you're awake, you're searching for the best wave. Whether you're waking up or you're almost going to sleep, you're just thinking of how you're gonna find that best wave. Just that most oil glass, different color barrel. 